Hey everyone, this is Kim with Abundant Life Tarot and we are doing another unboxing. This time it is with the Antique Anatomy Tarot, a deck and guide book for the modern reader by Claire Goodchild. And I am regretful over the fact that I don't own the indie version of this deck, the ephemera edition. I'm actually really upset about that. I saw when it came out and I was like mm, I'll get it it'll not sell out it'll be there and eventually it sold out before I could get it so I was excited that the mass produced edition was going to come out but um, let's see it's the publisher is Abrams Notary what well, I'm not familiar with that publisher but um, I own all three editions of the Oracle of Oddities and that is the like companion oracle deck to the or you know to the an antique anatomy tarot. I'm just going to show you a couple just for reference. So for the longest time, I have been trying to find a good tarot deck to work with this oracle, and oftentimes I couldn't find some, a deck that really played nicely or played well together with it. I'm not really into the wooden tarot, even though I own the earthbound uh, oracle, and just wasn't working out for me. So I wasn't going to give up on these, though. I end up using these more for read, like standalone readings, um, more than anything, um, versus having it work with other decks but there's that so then we have this and i'm going to say this now i went and purchased this at barnes and nobles i got a good steal on it because they already were having a sale and then they had additional 15 percent off so the original price um i think on amazon was like 27 or 20 well the retail is 29.99 and I ended up paying like 23 and I went and got it. I purchased it and I've already read some reviews on it saying that the cardstock is really, really thin, which intrigued me because I really like almost thin cardstock, not too thin where I'm going to tear it up and bend it. But I also bend really hard cardstock by the way I shuffle. So I almost tend to prefer thin cardstock, but what I did was I gathered up different tarot decks, um, both um, mass produced, two mass produced, two indie, to kind of show you the relative size to the thickness and the size of the deck. So when I switch angles, we'll take a look at, at this deck compared to others, as well as a comparison to sitting with the um, Oracle of Oddities. So this may be a long video. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to switch angles in just a moment. But I'm concerned because people say it's super thin, paper thin. And although I appreciate super thin cardstock, I don't want to have paper thin cardstock, if that makes any sense. And it's a, in a gorgeous box. I can't wait to get my scissors to the plastic and start um digging at it or going at it so anyway so yeah that's what we're going to be focusing on today is this little deck here <laughs> oh, not that little so yeah i was able to take it off and so just to kind of show oh yeah it's got a nice open and opening it says it's all in your hands it's gorgeous and it's got the guidebook which is a maze balls. Oh my gosh. And I'm just going to just kind of. Oh, you guys. I don't think they're as paper thin as people are letting on. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I, I think I'm going to appreciate it more than some others. I'll just say that. So let's switch angles. Enough chit chat. Let's get to looking at this lovely deck. So we've switched angles here. Go, you can kind of see that this is a quality box here with the 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 text, the antique anatomy tarot, and Claire Goodchild is in the shiny gold, and then the rest is matte. And so it looks really gorgeous here. 
I'll look at the guidebook in a moment, but I mean, you can see this is quality right here. Now, we go to the inside of this, and this is a nice idea. I wish more of the mass-produced um, deck creators or what have you, the mass um, the mass publishers, I guess you could say, the follow suit, because this is quite helpful in keeping the cards together. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, we want to see how thick or thin these cards are. And I already kind of like played around with them to see, um, just with the soap being in here. And they, they are quite thin, I have to admit. They are. And I what I regret for the, the publisher is that if they just would have you know, maybe forego maybe a little bit of the extra nicety for the box or the book. I mean, we would take, we, I would either pay extra, I'm willing to pay extra for thicker cardstock, or you could just have black or white images. I'm not picky, but I am a little picky on the, the longevity of a deck. So just saying, but I knew that going in and I was still not detoured. <laughs> so there's that. Look, it's already nicking right here. That's not good. It's nick or peeling, and I don't like that. You can't see it. Let me see if I can show you. Right there. But you can do it kind of like that and smooth it out. But still, that's no. It's like just tarot readers, just so deck creators know, or mass produced ones. Uh, please know that we prefer decks that we can really work and beat up if we need to over the fancy box and over the luscious book. In my, I think I'm speaking for a lot of people, but I may not be speaking for everyone, of course, but that's how I feel personally. Okay, that's my soapbox. Because, yeah. Anyways, I wanted to show you first just like the size. Now, this is a 78, right? 78 card deck oh yeah 78 illustrated tarot here is the oracle of oddities as it relates to these are first second third edition combined so let's see if i can do it's slightly taller and definitely a lot more cards or maybe thicker I don't know but what we can do is compare it to other tarot size decks so first we're going to compare it to the dream keepers tarot by Liz Houston <laughs> let's see how it compares in terms of thickness okay it's still a hair smaller than the dream keepers and in probably a little bit thinner and this is one of my thinner decks the dream keepers let's see let's compare it to a couple of other decks I have here is the new era elements tarot which is mass produced by US games this is quite I think a bit thicker together get close together please <laughs> try not to rip these up still quite a bit thinner than those although US game systems typically uses a slightly thicker stock I find in most which is a nice surprise here's my eighth house tarot which has holographic smaller okay so I was gonna pull out a couple of other um, indies but I'm not gonna do that we don't need to I, or I have the fountain tarot which I think is gonna be thicker and obviously the moon child is gonna be way thicker and 
we don't need to even see that comparison but let's take a look at the cards here's the card backs i like them i like the brown it's all natural they are very thin now people are saying they're like thin as almost computer paper i would venture to say they're thicker than that <laughs> I would say, that are they thick though? But no, they're not. They are the thinnest tarot cards I think I've experienced in a long time, if ever. But we'll see how that works out for us, right? So, yeah, let's just, here's the full. It's very, very bendable. Now, this would be great for riffle shuffling, but what is unnerving for me is that they are, it already had like a chip. And so you probably don't want to even riffle shuffle or even overhand shuffle. What I would suggest that I, what I probably am going to do is etch these because when you edge it, I find that the deck gets a little bit, it just, I don't know, weather is better, I guess you could say. So I'm going to edge it, see how that works out for me. Item. The full figure zero. The magician. The high priestess. And actually, you know what? Before we go further, I think we will show you the thickness because a lot of you guys own, you may not own the new era elements, but you probably own the fountain. And you can tell right off the bat. The reason why I was just like, oh, it's not even a comparison. As you can see, it's pretty thick, the fountain. Oh, let's put these back for a second. And then you've got, you can see it really, really clearly. It gets the silver. So, yeah. So, you have a good understanding of how thin they are. So, if you're going to go ahead and buy them, just know that they are super thin. What is my hope is that similar to what happened with our good friend Mariel or Mary, our good deck Mariel Tarot. Not good friend. <laughs> Maybe a friend's a son, but they pulled it off the shelves or off the market to, you know, deal with the issues and now hopefully I think they're gonna uh, the shiffer is gonna put it back out next week i think the second edition mariel so we'll see Let's see how it goes okay so we got through that here's the high priestess and the empress there's the lovers i love that I got this deck with a, like specific meat like readings in mind for this um, like health and well-being readings I'm not doing like medicinal readings or like diagnosis readings it's not my thing but overall health and well-being readings I felt like this could work through the hermit and I wanted a deck to go with the Oracle of Oddities and why not the one that it was meant to go with Wheel of Fortune love that Justice, the hanged man, death, temperance, devil, tower, the star. Judgment, the world, well, there are no elixirs, which I'm assuming is the cups, love potion number one, love that, so that's ace of elixirs, <laughs> two of elixirs, and we've got Yara, love tonic, plus Fitz, Fitzpatrick Pharmacals Passion Tincture. Ooh, yeah, nice. 
And I bet you the flowers have some sort of meaning added to it as well. And maybe it's covered in the guidebook. Three of elixirs. You've got Joy Tonic, Bliss Elixir, and Love Potion. Yay. Four, Arsenic, Morphine. It says Fever Remedy. You can like read the little bottles. Heroin, Cough Tonic. What is this? Yeah, I need pills. Wow. Uh, five of elixir, cyanide, morphine, the passion tincture, but you can't quite see yet what those are. These are obscured by the flowers and leaves. Six of elixirs, sparrow labs. All your different options. Carnation flowers, I know. Eight of elixirs. I love this. We've got despair, let go potion, soul journey, aura cleanse, wake up potion, the void. Um, these are obscured. You can't quite see it yet. Love that. Here's nine of elixirs. Wish Tonic, Blue, Bliss Brew, Brew, Love Potion, Joy Elixir, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. It's cool. And then ten of elixirs. Wisdom, Bliss, kind of obscure though. Harmony Elixir, Calming, Happiness, Passion, Love, Dream, all that. So gorgeous. Page, Eternal Youth. Age of elixirs or cups. Night, fertility tonic. <laughs> Queen of elixirs, beauty potion. And calming tonic. King of elixirs. We have Ace of Rods. Too. This deck is very pippish in this way. And so not everyone is going to resonate with pip decks, whether you're seasoned or you're new to it. Others will be like intimidated by it, but really, it really helps to sometimes use pip decks um, in your readings because you can really start to rely on your own intuition and your memory of the meanings in it. You're not tied necessarily to images in the deck or in the card. Um, you can come up with your own meanings that are really picking up on your intuition. So, those three of rods, which is traditionally three of fire or three of wands. Four. Five. Notice the color of the flowers. Six. Seven. Eight. Page of Rods, King, or not King, Knight of Rods, hello, Queen of Rods, pretty, King of Rods, now we go to the coins, Ace of Coins, Two, three, I like that. As above, so below, manifesting into to the physical world. Oh, I like that. Hmm. Four of coins.
I'm all 11. Do I just say 11? Sorry, I'm losing my mind. Page of coins. I got all into 11. Page of coins. Interesting. Knight. Queen. King. Now we're on our last suit. Blades. That's the Ace of Blades. Two of Blades. Three of Blades. Four of Blades. Five. Six. Seven. Nine of blades. Ten of blades. Page. Knight. Queen. Of that. And king. Nice. Now we're going to try to shuffle them. Didn't make a huge invest financial investment, so I'm not feeling too bad about beating them up. And I know that edging them is going to make it a little bit better. And I've heard some people backing them up with contact paper, but I'm not going to put forth that kind of effort. <laughs> Just maybe edging it, and that even that to me is putting forth too much effort. So. Because it's so thin, it shuffles so nicely. No doubt about it. I mean, thin cardstock is right at my alley for how I to riffle shuffle. But, you know, overhand I worry about scuffing it. But so far, I mean, it's shuffling nicely. And I think, like I mentioned before, edging it might be what the what we need to do kind of help it along, but we'll see. I really like it, though. I really like the energy of this bag. I like um, the pip-ish vibe it's got going. And aside from the very thin cardstock, it's a really nice product. And I paid for this deck, so no one paid me say that. So, we'll look here. Go do this. Let's see. I kind of wanted to look at the guidebook for a moment to I don't know. Wait, I'll be on in a moment. Thanks. It's where we left it the last time. Thanks. Okay. So, anyways, before I was really interrupted. <laughs> um. Mm. Let's look at the guidebook. So, 
Introduction, History of Tarot, the Major or Minor, Pip Deck. She even talks about it being a Pip Deck. She says the Antique Anatomy Tarot is a Pip Deck, which means that only the Major Arcana and Court cards are illustrated figuratively. The numbered Minor Arcana cards are depicted minimally with just the object relating to the suit featured as many times as the number of the card. In some decks, the Minor Arcana numbered cards are depicted as scenes that show the meaning of the card. While both deck styles have their advantages, working with pip cards ensures you truly learn the card meanings using memorization. Love that. I love that she talked about that here. Correspondences, numerology, numerolo numerological associations. For example, like one beginning ideas raw energy, two duality balance and opposing forces and the companion cards huh. astrology and the tarot nice the elements and the tarot color she even calls them the color which is cool i figured so right the elements oh i love that the colors like yellow positivity optimism warmth and growth Orange, creativity, expression, fun, and success. Red is anger, passion, love, sex, and danger. Ways of using the tarot. Tarot spreads, meditation, dream interpretation, spell work, journaling. Caring for your deck. Storage. Some spreads. Nice. The major. And we've got two per... Two per page love that so let's go to the miners we want the rods ten of rods you have reached the end of a cycle and it is becoming clear that scaling back in the future will make you more productive in the long term what steps can you take to reduce your burden next time maybe you need to take on fewer commitments perhaps bring in an outside help what if you only focus on things that excite you or inspire you? The Ten of Rods is also a great reminder that with every success comes more responsibility and that being aware of your limitations is not a sign of weakness, but of strength. Keywords, persevere, scale back, ending burden, overload, and pressure. And then write the oracle here from the Oracle of Oddities is ending gorgeousness. I was just in on my Facebook page um, live on my Abundant Life Tarot Facebook page and um, Sky, <laughs> Starlit Sky had recommended that I needed to get an assistant but I see here it feels like this is speaking right to that right to me like I need to delegate I have another reading upstairs that I do, did from my altar this morning and it was from what was it, the Goddess Guidance Oracle by Doreen Virtue, and I got the car. I forgot the actual goddess, but it was uh, basically start delegating, and I need to. I think I'm going to put out the word for an intern. A very low paying, but very high reward, because I can teach you tarot and oracle reading, and also give you a good reference. <laughs> but I need some help. I need help. If you know of someone who might be interested in being a virtual assistant for me and an intern, send them my way. Okay, then we've got the Eight of Coins. Eight of Coins, which is here. The Eight of Coins gives you the courage to take up a new job or start a project in a field that you are passionate about. Oh, did I skip something? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. This card reminds you to be as dedicated as you can be in the work you undertake you want to learn as much as possible in order to produce the best product possible but remember to master each skill before moving on to the next being a beginner can be difficult it feels like you aren't going forward as quickly as you would like remember that everyone has to start at the beginning and what you are experiencing is not something you can rush keywords dedication skills beginner new craft passion willingness to learn and look we have the awaken card that accompany that's the, you know i call it the um as above so below and spread 
you know, the awakening to that, coming to understanding that. And I, wow, I think it could, I mean, speaking to me, I wonder if it's speaking to any of you. I think whoever is called to watch this video, it might be just speaking to you or all of us, right? Hits us all differently. And then we've got the, what is that? The six of rods. Nice. And explore. So let's see the six of rods. Sorry for all my squeaky chair. Okay. And with yellow. Remember yellow, right? So remember they had some color associations here. Let's go look at that. But yellow is positivity, optimism, warmth, and growth. That's cool. Six. Numerological Association Fairness Value Solution. Okay. You have been victorious in battle, and now is your time to shine. The Six of Rods ask that you hold your head high. Your accomplishments are the result of your hard work, and it's important to be proud of that. This card can also indicate that others recognize the effort you have made, and you could be offered a promotion. Remember that the caliber of work that you got this far will be expected to continue. There is no room for slacking or arrogance here. As long as you understand that, there is no limit to how far you can go. Keywords, victory, promotion, winning, vindication, public recognition, and triumph over explore. Love that. Love it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm feeling so good about this, you guys. I'm so happy I got this deck. Yeah, it's super thin. Yeah, you're going to have to use kit gloves when you're using it. Try not to use it all the time. If you can help it, it sucks. But whatever, do what you need to do to make it as tough as it can because it really is a beautiful reader. If you've ever been curious about pip decks and you didn't know which one to really start to work with, this would probably be a good gentle one to work with because it has such an awesome uh, book that's not overly full of information but just has enough to get you going and inspire some ideas and it, it just her keywords even are really helpful you could even write down keywords that in your own keyword book that you resonate with for each mini uh for you know and then over time you build up your own little book if you will of meanings to your cars just an idea but yeah this is the gorgeous the antique anatomy tarot by claire goodchild let me know if you have it let me know if you have the original one um the in, the independent version one give me your thoughts give me your ideas i especially want to hear about how you all are addressing the card stock issue and much love so many blessings to all of you bye thanks for watching love y'all